Time for the next section, which is uh, borrowing and data races. There it is. And this part is uh, it's not much code, uh, lots of reading, but it's uh, this is where we start to see unsafe, which is interesting. So uh, in Rust, values can be borrowed in two ways, and this is uh, a reiteration of the uh, the rules that uh, everybody will know, everybody on this channel will know about uh, immutable and mutable borrows. You can have as many of these as you want. You can only have one of these, and you can't have uh, you know immutable when you have immutable. So I'll just skip that one part. But uh, the interesting part is uh, what does it do for the uh, for data races and for the compiler. So these two concepts together, immutable and immutable borrowing concepts, fully prevent data races. And a data race is where one thread is mutating data while another is uh, concurrently accessing it at the same time. Data races are generally what is called undefined behavior, and uh, that means that the compiler does not need to take these situations into account. So that undefined is kind of interesting because uh, the compiler defines what uh, what is going to what's going to be happening, and then safe is kind of like a uh, or unsafe is a way to get around that, but it's uh, it hasn't defined it, so uh, it's uh, it's going to do some some weird stuff if you do it wrong. And so it will simply assume that they do not happen. To clarify what that means, let's take a look at an example where the compiler can make a useful assumption using the borrowing rules. And this is a pretty normal looking function, but when you when you type it out and think about it, it's kind of interesting. It's about uh, the compiler optimization. So let's see. So just a function called f, and it's got this thing called a, which is a reference to an i32, and it's got b, which is a mutable reference to an i32. And then what happens is we have this thing called before, and before is a deref, uh, deref a, so it's pointing to the value of a so it's not a reference it's it's pointing to the actual value and then b plus equals one this was this one is mutable so you can do that then you have let after equals another one star a so before and after are both pointing to this and then there's a if before not equals after and then it's got uh, in the book it types this but we don't have a function called x so it wouldn't compile but so you can do uh we could do like print line or something like this will never happen something along those lines and so the interesting part is this so we get an immutable reference to an integer uh, store the value of the integer in before and after um, after after incrementing the uh, the B and so the compiler, this is the interesting point, the compiler is free to assume that the fundamental rules about borrowing and data races are upheld. So the compiler is assuming that, uh, that we're, we're not using up unsafe. And that means that B can't possibly refer to the same integer as A does. So that's right, it cannot be the same. They're, they're uh, different because um, we've got the borrowing rules and you couldn't have these at the same time. Uh, in fact, uh, nothing in the entire program can mutilate, mutably borrow the integer that A refers to as long as A is borrowing it. So that's also true. So you've, if you have this, you're inside this function, you're guaranteed that um, this is not being mutably borrowed anywhere inside the program. And so the compiler can conclude that A, star A, will not change. And that means that this will never be true. And that means that it can completely remove the call to X from the program. So it just deletes everything because it knows that uh, it's, uh, it's meaningless. It's not going to ever happen. And you can actually see that by going to Godbolt over here, where you can, uh, you can look at the generated, let's see, the generated uh, assembly. And um, I don't know why, there we go, that's better. So there you go, here, here's the rest, there's the uh, assembly. And you can see there's nothing to do with, uh, with a print line in there, even if you don't know assembly, and I also don't really know assembly. But if you go print line 
this will happen then you can see it has all this uh, there you go it's got this uh, this will happen here so you can see it's generated all this code for this will happen whereas if that happens uh, if you uh, if you just have if before not equals after then it says uh, this will never happen but it doesn't even bother because it knows that's not going to happen so all it does is uh, is uh, increment B basically so there you go uh, it's impossible to write a Rust program that breaks the compiler's assumptions other than by using an unsafe block. And that gets to undefined behavior. So languages like C, C++, and Rust have a set of rules that need to be followed to avoid something called undefined behavior. For example, one of the rules is that there cannot be more than one mutable reference to an object. And if you want to break any of those rules, you have to use unsafe code. And unsafe, uh, this is also in interesting or important does not mean that the code is incorrect or never safe to use, uh, but rather that the compiler is not validating, it's not checking for you. And if you uh, violate those rules, it's called unsound. And yeah, that's why unsafe, I kind of think of unsafe blocks as like a trust me or I know what I'm doing block. Uh, the compiler is allowed to assume without checking that these rules are never broken, so it's not going to check at all. When broken, this results in something called undefined behavior. You want to avoid that at all costs. If you allow the compiler to make an assumption that is not true, then that's bad because it's not going to check and uh, it was your fault. Uh, then it can easily result in more wrong conclusions about different parts of your program, of your code, and affect your whole program. So as a concrete example, let's take a look at a small snippet and it uses this uh, get unchecked method, which is like get, except for it's not even going to check whether the uh, whether there's anything in that index. So I'm going to type that out now. So we got, uh, what do we got? Let a, where are we? Let a, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. And then we say let b, equals and we're going to do some unsafe and we're going to say well it's a dot uh, get unchecked and then it says index here now let's make it into uh, instead of index I'm going to actually get an index that doesn't exist and then we'll see what we get and it's going to be it's going to be who knows what go to run Okay, so let's see what's after the 789. There you go. Minus, uh, what is that? Minus 1.4 billion. So that's probably not what we wanted. Let's see what's an index for. So you can see this is very undefined behavior. There you go, we got a 30. So it's obviously not doing any checking for us. So, this means, let's see, do, 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 do. get unchecked gives us an element of the slice, just like a uh, index, but allows the compiler to assume that the index is within bounds without any checks. That means that uh, because a is of length three, the compiler may assume that index is less than three, so it's zero, one, or two, and we have to make sure that the assumption holds. If we break this assumption, for example, if we give it an index three, like we did, anything might happen might read from memory what was stored in the bytes right after a which is what we did so you got memory and then right next to it is some extra memory that we're not supposed to look at but we uh we looked at it and we found minus 1.4 billion it might cause the program to crash it might end up uh, executing some entirely unrelated part of the program it can cause all kinds of havoc perhaps surprisingly uh, undefined behavior can even travel back in time, which causes programs and code problems and code that precede it. Uh, to understand how that can happen, imagine that we had a match statement before a previous snippet as follows. So we got this. I'm going to uh, type this out. This is another one of those uh, examples here that doesn't quite compile, and then I want to make it into something that does. It's more like a demonstration here. A demonstration of a concept, that is. So, where are we? Okay. So, 
So I'll say let x equals match index. I'll just say let index equals three. And we're going to match index and zero. Uh, in the book it has this, but I'll just say uh, zero for now. Uh, then I'll say one gives a one. And then index, what we're going to do is, um, hmm, it says a function called uh, z. So I'm not sure what to do with that. Let's just uh, let a, let b. Something like that. Let I'll call this index. There we go. So I don't know, something like that. And let's see what uh, the traveling back in time is about. Because of this uh, unsafe code, the compiler is allowed to assume index is only ever 0, 1, or 2. Hmm. Okay. It may logically conclude that the last arm of our match statement will only ever match a 2, and thus that z is only ever called as z2. Okay. So it um so the compiler knows that there are three uh three indexes and so it might look at this. I see. So it might look at this and think okay, uh we're not using well we're following the rules and uh only 0 is okay, 1 is okay. And the only other okay number is two, and so it's going to optimize for that. Uh, so it might optimize that for the match, uh, might optimize uh, z itself. So if you're calling this uh, this function z, might use that to uh, optimize it and assume that there's a two that's uh, that's going in there, and that's uh, and that's going to be really weird if you use uh, unsafe wrongly. So if we execute this with an index of three, our program might attempt to execute parts that have been optimized away. Yeah, that's right. So it optimizes this, assuming that it's a two, even though it gets a three, and that results in weird, completely unpredictable behavior. And we haven't even gotten to the unsafe part of the uh, line. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so just like that, if you have undefined behavior, it can go through, it can propagate through the whole program, both backwards and forwards. And so that's why you want to use it uh, almost never. Like I've never used it in at work yet. Of course, I haven't worked in like embedded or anything like that. And that's when you have to uh, get into unsafe uh, a lot. So um, read its documentation carefully and make sure you fully understand its safety requirements. The assumptions you need to uphold as the color to avoid undefined behavior. So there you go. That is, uh, what was this called again? Borrowing and data races. So yeah, more interesting than you might think from this uh, looking at how small the code samples are. But yeah, this is definitely optimizing for Z based on the assumption that this is going to be a two is really interesting. So yeah, next uh, next video is going to be about the interior mutability, mutability types like uh, cell and so on.